Hi there, friends. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that your week is going well. It definitely feels like uh, wintertime out there again this week. I don't know about you, but uh, I've kind of enjoyed having some wintertime to enjoy a little change in the seasons. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update. So many of you have asked since Sunday. Of course, if you weren't there Sunday, you probably weren't aware, but we had a little bit of excitement right before the service where an ambulance had to be called. And uh, for those of you who were wondering and have been praying, uh, Nick is doing well. He was examined at the hospital on Sunday afternoon and allowed to come home, and they don't think he's had a stroke or anything. And I've been in communication with him again today, and he's doing well and is just very grateful for his church family. Thank you for praying for him. Uh, Just a reminder, all of our normal stuff is happening as scheduled this week, small groups. Uh, youth group on Wednesday evening, Celebrate Recovery on Thursday evening, and Discovery Group uh, still meeting every Monday evening. And if you haven't been a part of the uh, adult Bible study, the Sunday school class that meets at 845 on Sunday mornings, I want to encourage you to check that out. Every week it's just so fun to hear the reports of just how God is working so powerfully in that group. Good things happening there. So uh, that's in the Grace Room at 845. Uh, One schedule change to just make you aware of, we had planned to have the next Connection class this coming Sunday, but we are pushing that back three weeks. Uh, We'll have our next class on uh, February the 20th, that Sunday afternoon. So if you're new to Freedom or maybe you are looking to find out more about the church or get more connected, we'd love for you to be a part of that uh, Sunday afternoon three weeks from now. Well, we're going to turn our attention now back to the scriptures. We've been working our way through the Sermon on the Mount And we're in Matthew 7, and I want to just take time to focus on one little verse. And I'll be honest with you, uh, it's a verse that I had not intended uh, to press into. I was kind of jumping to the very next section. Uh, It's it's one of those, the next section beginning in verse 7 is just such a positive and encouraging and hopeful passage. And as I was preparing for that, I really felt the nudge of the Holy Spirit saying, back up, there's a verse that you skipped and there's something important there that needs to be shared. And so we're going to look at that. And this is really one of those passages that you don't hear talked about a lot. And when people ever say it, they'll kind of say this, a line out of this, out of context. And so... But it is an important truth, so I want us to press into this. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 6, Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Well, Jesus, you know, is the master of uh, taking very simple word pictures, simple analogies, and just laying them out there, and many times without explanation, just leaving it to hang for, for us to chew on, for us to reflect and meditate on and let the Holy Spirit show us the meaning behind that. Because in this case, like so many others, he just says this picture and then leaves it for us to interpret. And so what's he talking about? Obviously, he's not just talking about what you feed your dogs or your livestock. He's talking about something that we can do with other people that we need to be careful about, that we need to be guarded about. Well, what is this? What does it mean to give dogs what is sacred and to throw pearls to pigs? Well, in order to understand this, I think all we need to do is rewind and consider the five verses that we talked about last week. In the preceding passage, I told you last week, it's the most, it's the most misquoted and misused piece of Scripture in all the Bible where Jesus begins by saying, don't judge lest you be judged. And people so misconstrue that to mean, so you should never say anything about anyone else or ever uh, really address anything in anyone else's life. Well, that's not what Jesus is saying, as he makes clear in, in the following verses. The point that Jesus has made is that how we live really does matter. For all of us, for everyone who's a follower of Christ, how we live matters. And he makes the point, our first concern should be that we are are very careful to examine our own lives, that we take seriously the matter of personal holiness, that we are careful to guard our words, our thoughts, our actions, that they reflect the character of Christ, and that we are quick to deal with the things that that are out of line. And the point that he makes is, you know, he uses this little analogy here of saying, you know, how silly would it be for you to try and point out the speck in someone else's eye, the problem in someone else's life, if in fact you've got a great big plank something bigger in your own life that you're ignoring and so he says first deal with the thing in your own eye deal with the issue in your own life and then you'll be positioned to help the the person next to you who's struggling with something in their eye in their life and the picture that Jesus is giving us is one that's so helpful and healthy that we really do need each other there are going to be times where where we need for someone else to help us deal with what we're struggling with. We're not going to get past it without their encouragement, their wisdom, counsel, or accountability. 
we're going to need them to, to come along and help us with the, the issue that we have, and we're going to need to do the same thing for other people. But Jesus is helping us to see not only the priority of first considering our own lives and our own struggles, but also realizing that once we've done that, when that's become a lifestyle for us, that that I'm always alert to the fact that I have weaknesses and I have failures, that it's that very thing that positions me to be a good person to help someone else with their struggles. Because when you become someone who's really in touch with your own failures and your own struggles and just how difficult it can be to, to get some issues laid to rest in your own life, it really does create a sense of humility so that when we're helping someone else, it's not from an attitude of, well, you better get your act together because you've got a problem. No we realize together, hey, we're all broken people, all struggling with different things, and together we can find wholeness as we turn to Christ, as we lean into Him and to one another for help, encouragement, and hope, and, and accountability. So that's the picture that Jesus has given us. But then He follows that with the verse that we read today. But watch out as you're seeking to do this thing that you're going to need. You're going to need to help other people. You're going to need the help of other people. But as you do this, be really careful because if you don't watch yourself, you'll wind up giving something that is sacred to what he calls dogs or you'll wind up essentially giving your pearls to pigs. Well, who are these dogs? Who are these pigs? And what are the pearls? What are the precious things that we're putting in a place that they could take advantage of them? Well, it's, it's the very things that we're talking about. It's the struggles that we're having. It's the, the things that really are an ongoing challenge for you. I mean, imagine, for instance, if the thing that you really struggle with is someone who's hurt, hurt you deeply. Maybe someone um, that you loved was unfaithful to you. Maybe a, a parent or a family member did great damage to you through abuse or something. I mean, we're not talking about the little things that are easy to forgive. We're talking about major issues, and so you've struggled with maybe hurt, unforgiveness, bitterness. And you share all that gets tangled up with that with someone else that you trust, but if you're not careful about who you share that with, oh, that can come back to bite you. I, I learned this lesson the hard way. I, I was thinking today about a friend that I had known for many years, his fellow pastor, and uh, many years ago, I just in private shared with him something that was a, a challenge and a struggle in my own life. It was shared completely in confidence, and I didn't need him to fix anything for me. I just I wanted his wisdom. I wanted his prayers. Just really wanted to be able to talk through that with him because so many times just getting something out in the open helps you to find freedom from that. And so I shared something in confidence with him, knowing that it's not going to go any further than just him and me. Well, you can imagine my shock when a week or two later, one of the families in the church that I pastored, who it just so happened used to be members of this friend's church. They had left his church and had come to the church that I was pastoring. And they just came up to me and started just out of nowhere talking openly to me about my life and my thing that I had shared in confidence with this pastor friend. Well, it was abundantly clear that he had talked to them about it as if it were just fine for them to, to talk openly about this thing and it's not that it was a scandalous issue at all but it was the fact that for me it was something that I was struggling with something that I was needing to let go of and needing to find help and healing for and that he knew was was in confidence but here was an opportunity to drop that little secret drop that little bomb into the circle of these two or three families that used to be in his church that now were in the church that I was pastoring and it's like, well, maybe you should know this about your pastor now. So he passes it on to them. I think that's a prime example of what it's like to give what is sacred to what Jesus says, giving it something sacred to dogs, giving something precious. He you know, uses the example of a pearl, something precious that you would want to guard. And he says giving that to a pig that's not going to use it appropriately. They're going to turn around and misuse that. And he says... If you're not careful, they'll turn around and tear you to pieces with the precious thing that you share with them. The point is, it's vitally important for us when we identify the, the one or two or three areas where we struggle the most and where we just can't seem to get over certain things, it's very important that we have someone that we can share that with so that they are going to help us 
come to a place of victory, come to a place of getting past these things, getting to a healthier place. We're going to need their help to get there. That's why James said in James 5, 16, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. God made us with a, a need to lean into each other to find real victory and healing. We all are going to need that help, and we're going to need to supply that help for other people. But Jesus says, watch out, because there are, there are people that it's not going to be appropriate to enter into this kind of relationship with. And I would suggest to you there are two kinds of people for which what Jesus has just described isn't a fit. First of all, it's lost people who have no interest right now in the things of God or doing what's right. And sometimes we're very tempted to look at a lost person and act offended or feel offended because they're acting like lost people. We'll just use this as for instance. Uh, say I know a guy who's married, but he doesn't act very married because he's always flirting with other women. He's always being inappropriate with other women. The things that he talks about and the, the ways that he touches and engages with them, just totally out of line for a married man. But he's a lost guy and he has no interest in Jesus, church, or the things of God. If I go and I try and confront his behavior and tell him how wrong it is and teach him to be a better person, there's a really good chance that's not going to land well at all. And we could make a list of any number of issues like that, that if we're trying to get a lost person to act more like a saved person, short of sharing Jesus with them and helping them come to a place of repentance and faith in Jesus, it's a waste of time. It's like throwing what's sacred to dogs because it's not going to make sense to them. In fact, how have we really helped them if we're just teaching lost people to act more like saved people short of helping them to become saved people? So you... You can't practice what Jesus has just described in terms of helping people to change their behavior if, in fact, they aren't a part of the community of faith. So that's one way we need to guard ourselves. Don't, don't go out and try and clean up the world without keeping Jesus at the center of that. That's going to fail miserably. But the other way is what I just described. So we've got to be really careful that when we share a struggle with someone else, that we know that we can trust them and that they can agree with us. Oh, that's really difficult. That really is a struggle. If they can't begin by acknowledging that, you don't need to be sharing your struggle with them. Now, the, the thing that's tempting for us is to just say, well, the safe play is just don't tell anybody what you really struggle with. Just keep it between you and Jesus. And you know what? That is the safe play, but it's also the pathway to a life of struggle and defeat because we, we're made to live in community. We are designed to need each other and to need to be able to lean on some other people. So we can't afford to, to take the safe play. We've got to be willing to carefully, prayerfully, thoughtfully choose other people that we can be open and honest with. You don't rush into that. But it's such a life-giving thing to find a brother or sister that you really can share your struggles with, they can share with you, and you pull each other upward. You don't just blow things off and go, ah, that's no big deal. You think that's a struggle. Let me tell you what I struggle with. No, they don't do that. They agree with you that this matters, that this is difficult. They encourage you. They help you. They hold you accountable, and they pray for you. And together, we do find help and healing. For me, John Beck has been that kind of friend. He's not the only friend like that that I have, but John is one of those people that Anytime I'm struggling with something, if I find myself struggling with anger or hurt or bitterness or unforgiveness or whatever the issue is, if I find something unhealthy welling up in me and I, I'm struggling to get rid of that, it's amazing how much having a brother like that that I can share with and say, let me tell you what's going on, let me tell you how I'm struggling. It's crazy how, how much freedom there is in just getting it said out loud, exposing that issue to the light with a trusted brother or sister and how much healing there is as we talk and pray together. We all need those kinds of relationships. But Jesus says, be careful, be thoughtful about who that's going to be for you. I hope you've got somebody like that in your life. If you don't, I want to ask you to do a simple thing. Ask the Lord to bring somebody in your life. Ask him to show you someone that you could begin to pursue a closer more personal relationship with. In fact, why don't we pause and do that together right now as we pray. Father, we love you. We want to honor you with how we live our lives. We want to be a holy people because you are holy. We want to really pay attention to how we live and we want to pull each other, the people around us. We want to pull one another in the right direction. We want to be more like Jesus. I pray that you'd help us to find people who would encourage us and spur us on toward love and good deeds just as your word says. 
And I pray right now for some people who are watching and listening to this that you would just begin to put on their hearts and minds the names and faces of people who could be those kinds of friends and helpers and encouragers to them. Lord, we thank you for Freedom Church and how you're at work among us. And we thank you for every campus, for every leader. And we pray that you continue to protect the unity of your church. And we pray for a continued outpouring of your Holy Spirit that we would see the, the kingdom advanced and real life change happening. Lord, we pray towards Sunday that it would be a fruitful day of ministry. And we look forward to that. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I really appreciate you taking time to tune in today. I hope that's been an encouragement to you. And I look forward to seeing you Sunday. I hope that you can join us live at 10 o'clock at Freedom Church. If you can't join us live, I hope you'll join us online. You take care and have a great week. Take care.